Today's hidden question comes from Peter Rabber, and he asks, what's a good drill to help nine to 11 year olds see the ball? In our area, they are coming up from coach pitch and live pitching is destroying the bulk of the league. That's a great question, and I've got an answer for you. But before we get into it, I want to say thank you to Abo Baseball for sponsoring this video. Abo Baseball is a bat manufacturer in Canada where they supply premium cut billets to players of all ages. They ship to the U.S. and worldwide, so check the link in the description and see what they got going on. Now, I know you said 9 to 11-year-olds, uh, but really this video is for any age hitter because these principles apply to uh, at any level, right? One of the biggest things I see that going from uh, coach pitch to live pitching is, you know, when the coach is throwing, they're trying to lay it in there perfectly. Now, with live pitching, the pitcher is pitching, and they're trying to get the batter out from an early age, even if they're not that, they don't have that much ability just yet. But obviously, as they get older, they're going to get better. The pitchers are going to get better, so they're going to be better at disrupting the batter's timing and balance. With that being said, timing has a lot to do with that. Also, from the hitter's perspective, plate discipline has a lot to do with that because they're used to getting pitches from the coach that were just laid in there, but now they're getting pitches all over the zone and they don't know what's coming. Different pitches, again, as the pitchers get older, they're gonna get better at disrupting the batter's timing and balance because that's what pitching is. That's how successful pitchers get batters out. So as a batter, you gotta be able to understand that, have good plate discipline so that you can get your pitch to hit. What do I mean by plate discipline? Plate discipline just means that you're able to see the pitch early, recognize it, that's pitch recognition, and then decide whether you're gonna swing or not. If it's a ball, you have to have that plate discipline to know that that's a ball, meaning you know where your plate is and where the ball is in reference to that plate. plate. Is it in the strike zone? Is it out of the strike zone? So that is plate discipline. Pitch recognition also goes into that. The earlier you can see the ball, and that's your main question, I believe, is how do you get these guys to see the ball? The number one thing I love to do with any age player is to train small, right? Train with mini wiffle balls, train with a skinny barrel bat, because if you practice with mini balls and a skinny barrel bat and you are able to hit those, just imagine how much easier it's gonna be to hit a real size baseball with a regular size barrel bat. It's gonna be so much easier. Now, don't get frustrated when you first start, especially for the players at the younger ages, because it's tough. When you first start taking swings at those mini wiffle balls, you're gonna miss a lot of them. Really at any age, man, I've seen high school guys get up there the first 10 swings they take, they're whiffing at these mini wiffle balls. But over time, if you put in the work and you put in the practice, you're gonna start to hit them. Then you're gonna start to hit them better. Then you're gonna start to hit them more consistently harder. Then when you get to the baseballs and the regular size bat, you're gonna start crushing them. It works because you're you have to really focus on those mini balls, right? When you're seeing those balls come in, you really have to zone in. And if you're zoning in, if you're training that small and you're zoning in that zoned in, that tight on that small ball with the small bat, and you're that perfect, it gets so much easier when you get bigger, right? Does that make sense? Now, another thing that goes into seeing the ball better is going from a soft focus to a hard focus. This is another great one. I learned this one from Matt Antonelli years ago. And what you want to do is, see, I, I hear a lot of coaches say, stare at the release point, stare at the pitcher's release point. Um, but what happens when you start staring there early is your eyes get tired. If you have ever stared at anything for a long time, try go ahead and stare at something in your room right now for 10 seconds straight, as focused as you can. Your eyes are gonna get tired, your eyes might start watering. That's what happens when you have a hard focus for too long. So we don't wanna have a hard focus for too long. We wanna have a soft focus, then move into a hard focus as the ball comes. So we want the soft focus that we wanna have is just a general focus, a general look out to the pitcher as he's starting his delivery. Right, So we're not really zoned in in a hard focus just yet. We're just kind of gazing out there. We're seeing his whole body, his whole movement. We're kind of timing him up because timing's important in seeing the baseball as well. But then as he gets to release point, boom, then we go into a hard focus for a very short amount of time from the flight of the ball. So that's when we're gonna take a real hard focus and really see the ball out of his hand to contact. We want a hard focus for a short amount of time soft focus early so we can get the timing, get the movement of the pitcher, 
be on time, and then have a good focus for a short amount of time so our eyes don't get tired. That's going to help. So instill that into your players, especially the younger guys. That's a great one uh, for them to con – that concept is a great one for them to understand. Even in high school, college, pro baseball as well, it's a great concept to use and implement uh, with your hitters. Timing is the last thing I want to talk about. I know I touched on it before, but timing is huge when it comes to hitting the baseball. And going from coach pitch and having the coach throw pretty much the same exact time to going to live pitching, these guys are throwing different pitches, different speeds. Again, it comes to the pitcher being able to disrupt the batter's timing and balance. So the batter needs to be balanced and on time if he wants to be a good hitter. So we really need to work on this. I did some videos with Omir Santos. He was a major league uh, catcher, great hitter as well. And he talked about training more like game speed. And a lot of guys in the major leagues are starting to move this way. So they're doing a lot less T work these days. They're doing a lot less front toss. They're still doing this. It's still part of their progressions, but it's a lot less. And when they get into live BP, when the coaches are throwing, they're actually mixing in different pitches, different speeds, different locations. So even at the nine to 11 year old level, as a coach, instead of just going through some front toss or some easy BP, let's start mixing it up as you would see with an actual pitcher that you'd be facing. So, you know, mix in some fastballs, mix in some changeup, mix in some different locations. Don't just be laying it in there every single time. Challenge these guys. Omir was saying that it kind of, the guys will get frustrated at first. He sees the guys getting frustrated, but they've done some studies to show that it's actually very beneficial. And those guys who are taking practice more serious, like it's a game, they end up doing better during the game. So kind of keep that in your head as you, the coach, move into your practices. Try it out, see how it works for your guys, uh, and definitely let me know. So thank you so much for the question. Again, thank you to Abo Baseball for sponsoring this video, and hop down in the comments below, and I will help answer any questions that you guys have. Talk to you there. Thank you.